microphone and you're live on this one. Okay, good evening everybody. Um, we're live again in one of our uh, tasting sessions. Um, we're in our warehouse up at Connorsby. We get the better signal up there, so that's why we've come up here to, to do this live uh, tasting. And tonight we're doing things slightly differently, and I think it's unusual uh, for anyone to do a, a spirit tasting. But this is how the journey starts. I'm joined by Robin Bignall, the production manager at, uh, at Kilhoman. Um, Robin's um, been with us for 10 years, nine yeah, years, 10, 10 years, 10 years, uh, and uh, for the last five years has been the manager. So Robin, just uh, tell uh, everybody, probably a lot of people don't know you. Yeah. Um, there is someone there who looks after all our production and Robin's the guy. He'll just let you know exactly what he gets up to on a, uh, on a daily basis and what he's responsible for. Good evening, everyone. Um, well, I'm responsible for the production side, which starts with the um, uh, malt floor. And so that's got the steeping, uh, barley on the floor and up to the kiln. Then we move over to the production side, which um, you've got the stills, the mashing and the fermentation process. So basically oversee everything that goes on there to check that um, everything's been done right and we're following all the right procedures to produce the quality product that we do. And then, then we move on to the warehousing of the casks. As you can see here, the cask we've got here, it's a cask selection. And then once we've filled the casks and we go into the warehouse, five years or so down the line, um, we will select these for battings. Which finally uh, get put into the releases we, we do around the world. I think. Um, one person I'd like to mention at this point is the, uh, Jim Swan, who was my consultant right from the start of the, the, the project. And uh, he set out the parameters for Kilhoman's distillation, uh, and uh, we followed that all the way through. And I think Robin will, will say that it's, it's worked very well, and, and one of Robin's roles is to, to make sure that we follow this. Yeah, so we um, daily we check the quality of the spirits and stills, the still house guys, the shift. Uh, guys, they all check and sample the, uh, hopefully not too much, of the spirit in the stills as it comes through the safe. And usually, um, fortnightly, we will take samples from the, as we've got here actually, but we only do the two. We do the 10 minutes in and 40 minutes in from the run, and these will get archived so we can look back on them to check the. The spirit is all very consistent and it's parameters that we are looking for. Yeah, I think uh, what's important, I think, to any distillery is the consistent character of spirit that you produce. Uh, you always want that to be very similar. And uh, that's why, as Robin said, that we, we take samples from the runs uh, on a very regular basis and keep those. And then we can go back and compare. Uh, this is an interesting tasting. As far as I'm concerned, it's quite educational. It, it really shows people and those who've got the pack so we'll be able to taste with us through them and, and see how stark the differences are between the beginning of the run and the end of the run. We'll get on to the tasting in, in a minute, but just to, to, uh, to just describe, I mean, you know, there's so many influences in, in production, uh, but one thing we've been focusing on uh, and I've done various masterclasses on is, is uh, yeast varieties, for instance, and I think Robin are just... Uh, Tell you a little bit about the experiments we've done recently. Yeah, so recently we've been um, using dried yeast and it's, it's a little bit more difficult to pitch into the wash back because you have to heat the wash back up a bit, bit more compared to the press yeast. So we've been, you pitch that about 30 degrees in, bring the wash back down to 20 degrees. Whereas compared to the press yeast, you just put in at 20. Through, once the fermentation is finished, which we're average about 80 hours, um, when it goes through the still, we're finding that the uh, dried yeast is maybe uh, more of a floral, fruitier, yep. so, uh, new make spirit. Uh, and the, the Maori fresh yeast is a little bit creamier, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, exactly. I mean, so there's a marked difference, and I think people, I think the general public will sort of not really sort of think that yeast plays such a massive part in, in the character of the spirit. 
Uh, but it does. I mean, uh, and we've done barley varieties as well, but well, that's for another time. But yeast varieties have uh, shown us, and we've used Terry as well, haven't we, we in the Terry. past? And we weren't quite so keen on that. It wasn't as fruity. It was just a bit bitter. It was slightly yeah. bitter. You may get a better yield off it, but um, it's... Yeah. I think it's a bit yeah, a little bit better. better. And I think um, uh, Jim Swan was very keen on us using dry yeast, but in the old days, it was more difficult to, to work with. Uh, and now I think uh, Mary, who the, the um, yeast uh, producers that we use have, have come up with a better method of, yeah. uh, of pitching it and, and getting the temperature down in the wash back rather than pitching it. At the, no, you, don't have, to, you no. don't have to mix it. No, we don't have to mix it. The yields can be affected a little bit, can't they, with the dry yeast? But I think we found the, the latest batch worked pretty well. well. It did work pretty well, yeah. I mean, no. there's not much really to... No. Really, really you know, but we... Um, We've got one question here. Um, do you use any computers to monitor the spirit or is it just you tasting? It's just tasting. Yeah. Yeah, Terrible monitor job. And, yeah, so we don't use any The only computer that's used is to test the strength. Yeah, so it is it purely um, the taste of it and the nose of it. And, and, uh, and it's something I was just going to say that Mari Press Cheese is something we've used from day one. Uh, it's always given us wonderful results. Uh, and uh, but it's something that we have been looking at more and more. We like the, the dry yeast that we've we, uh, trialled, and we might uh, do a bit more of that in the future. And it's, and it's uh, shelf life as well. Yeah, and so it's, it's got two years shelf life on it, so we can have it. Whereas uh, fresh, fresh yeast, how long is that? It's two or three weeks. Yeah, so it's not long, so you have to use it fairly quickly. We're refrigerated, obviously, but dried yeast is much easier to work with. Yeah. yeah? Um, so I think it's all very well talking about. Uh, these like, geeky things uh, about using different yeast varieties uh, and uh, seeing the difference in your spirit. But we're not trying to sell spirit, are we? No. <laughs> uh, we're, we're selling uh, single malt, which, um, and I'm always of the opinion that uh, the, these casts here that we've got in the warehouse play the biggest part in terms of the character and taste profile of the whiskey that you'll enjoy. And when you're talking about some of these casts being in the warehouse for 10, 15, 20 years, then there's a massive amount of influence from those casks. And I think um, anybody in the industry who, who's um, experienced will tell you that 60 to 70 percent of the character, the whiskey that you'll enjoy will come from the cask that's matured. So we can talk about all these things at the front end of production, barley variety and, and yeast variety. And I think it's all about consistency and, and, and getting the, the spirit character that we're looking exactly. for. Consistency yeah. is the key. Yeah, I think that's that's the key thing. So. I think um, what's interesting about this, and I think probably, you know, why would anybody realize, you know, we're collecting spirit, probably tastes all the same. But uh, you'll know when you, when you go through these, the five minutes into the run is the much lighter, more floral and fruity character. Yeah. And then as we go through, how does it start pan out? Uh, as you go to the, the next one, I think the fruitiness starts going, it's still smooth. And then when you get onto the third one, it starts, going more faintier and the sweetness in this uh it just dulls down dull, yeah and then when you get to the last one it's more off notes yeah but still acceptable. It's, I mean, yeah that's, that's our and we, our cut points are quite narrow anyway aren't they yeah so it, it narrows down the amount of faint, fainter off notes that you might get at the back yeah, end so the, the fruity floral outweighs the yeah that's right the so when you combine notes. these four together and it might be fun for you at home when you've got these packs that actually just mix them all together put them all in one big glass and then those and take that's actually the end spirit the spirit that we will then fill into cask at 63.5 uh, percent um so um i know some of you have probably joined us that that haven't got tasting packs uh, i'm sorry that we couldn't get those out to you we only had a certain number that uh we sent and um but it's, it's fun to join in and just uh, learn a little bit about the journey that this goes on from uh, off the spirit uh, safe and into the uh, receiver uh, and what actually happens prior to it going into seeing any wood. Uh, and um, of course, it's completely clear. Uh, all the color is picked up from the, the cask that it goes into. And once again, we don't, um, we don't color any of our whiskies. We don't add caramel coloring. It, so all the whiskies that you'll enjoy from Kilhoman uh, will have uh, will basically be from the colour it picks up from uh, the cars. So bourbon cars, a, a lighter sort of white wine character to them, and then the the sherries obviously have a much richer, darker uh, uh, colour. So uh, I think what's important, and a lot of people are now doing it, is that 
bottling at a slightly higher strength, so you non-chill filtered, uh, and certainly the color and, and no no chill filtration in terms of uh, stripping out any proteins that might cause a haze in, in the, the whiskey when it's on the shelf. Um, the higher strength, uh, make sure that doesn't happen. So really, it's all about sharing our whiskey with people around the world with a, just a little bit of coarse filtration. So straight from the cast, a little bit of coarse filtration and straight into the bottle, uh, reduced to the bottling strength. So when you pick up your uh, first um, uh, sample, and this is five minutes into the run. So now we have a very, very short four shot run. Yeah, yeah. it's only five minutes. Five minute four shot. Yeah, so that is quite short compared to the modern distilleries. And that is because the spirit is incredibly uh, floral and, and, uh, and, and sweet and clean uh, right from the word go, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, even when you're in four shots and you know it's, it's still is, it's yeah. clean. You could almost take it straight off the still uh, as spirit, couldn't you? Yeah. Uh, and I think uh, when Jim was uh, with me back in 2005, late 2005, he said, well, well look, we'll go for a five minute run uh, as, as four shots. And when we talk about four shots, for those who are not aware, that is going back into the a low wines and faints receiver to be mixed with the, the run off the wash still. Mixed and what's the, the strength of the, the wash still mixed in down there? It's about... Well, you get but the wash still's around about 20, 21, and then when it's mixed with uh, low wines and faints, it's around about 26. Yeah, 26. 20, 20, yeah, average of 26%. And it's pretty filthy stuff. Um, you really wouldn't want to be trying too much of that. Um, they did in the old days, and I think a couple of stillmen went blind. Um, uh, trying that. So you want to then refine it by distilling it again, raising the, uh, what's, it comes in at, what sort of strength does it come in at? 70, well, at its full four shots, it's, you know, right at the start, yeah. it's uh, high 70s. High 70s. High 70s and then we start collecting then it, it. Then it drops down. And we start collecting it about? 74 and 76. 70, I think yeah. this is 74. Oh, it's got a strength. One, yeah, this is 74, this one. So roughly 74, 75, we start collecting the spirit. And then we run it all the way down to what is it? Sixty-three point no, sixty-five point five is our cut. Yeah, cut point. And then down to. And it's about an hour, hour and a half. Isn't hour it? and a half. Yeah, run, an yeah. hour and a half to run. Uh, someone's asking what made you settle on this particular spirit profile and the cuts between the heads and the tails. Um, I think uh, that was down to Jim Swan, um, to be honest with you, because he was a uh, consultant. And to be honest, we haven't really changed anything. Have no. We we've stuck. No. The only things we've tinkered are with is um, uh, fermentation times. At the end cuts, I think we used to cut at... Was it lower than lower? lower? It yeah, lower. it was quite low and now we've, we've raised he, it up a bit. Swan, when he came back in 2011 or 12. Yeah. He says you're just really wasting energy boiling yeah. up for Something that's little not. alcohol you're getting. Yeah, no, so, um, and I think it was very much to do with uh, I mean, I just let Jim Swan know the sort of character of whiskey I wanted, let alone the spirit, uh, and let him go away and, and design stills that would get his small, fruity character of spirit. Um, and, and really, that's all about uh, the aging it in very good wood that it'll come on reasonably quickly. I mean, uh, uh, you don't have to be a mathematician to realize that you need to get some income in fairly soon to turn the business around in terms of, of funding it. So if we'd had to wait for 10 years, uh, it would have been hard work raising the money to do that. So it was all about trying to um, to build and design a, a distillery around achieving a spirit that could be matured relatively quickly. It's, that isn't to say that we're going to release everything between three and eight years. It's 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 now about taking things forward, and we believe that our our whiskies will be best between eight and twelve, eight and twelve years. We think we believe that's uh, the case, and some of our 12 and 14 year old uh, single cask uh, bourbons. I mean, uh, they're fantastic. Aren't oh, they? something like that. Amazing, yeah. yeah. Um, so, back to the tasting. And I think um, you just nose this. You don't stick your nose right in it. It's 74% alcohol strength, so it's strong. But I think my first impression is it, it's so floral, floral isn't it? Fruity, floral, floral, fruity. And I think above all, it's very clean. And I think smooth. that's smooth. Yes. Um, and uh, going back and uh, and uh, Robin, this is before Robin's time. We actually sold our new spirit um, to sort of gauge interest and, and build brand awareness. And people were amazed. They sort of said, "Why didn't you just bottle that?" Well, people still I didn't, say that. Yeah, and I, and I said, "Well, I, I didn't spend six million pounds in building a spirit to sell new spirit. We were <laughs> wanting to take it through to single malt whiskey and share uh, with everyone uh, the aged product." I think that's. I, I, I get why people think that it it's a nice 
Um, it's nice to drink, but it's sort of grappa style, and, and that's not why we built the distillery. Uh, but I think right at the front of the run, and this shows it in all its glory, is that it's, it's this wonderfully fruity character. And I, at 74% alcohol strength, you don't get a huge amount of oh, alcohol no, burn. Can, can you taste it? Um, yes. uh, and it's fresh, and I think it's that sweet, clean style that, uh, you know, I remember Jim Swan turning to me in the still house and just saying the first run of the stills in November 2005, and he just said, uh, you know, you look after this, put it into the best quality wood, you'll be able to release it at three years of age. And he was absolutely, uh, he nailed it down because we did release uh, 8,000 bottles in 2009 on its uh, third birthday, and we've gone from there. But even now, going through, when we, what, we check casts in the warehouse and that, and you crack open a three-year-old or something just to check the consistency of, the consistency of them. But amazing yeah. how easy they are to, you know, there's no prickle there. Right? No, and I think, um, you know, it's a combination of this sort of character, because I think when you talk, you don't say good quality spirit, you say it suits what we want it to yeah. do. And uh, I, I'm not, never one to say, I think everyone produces their own style of spirit. Uh, some of it might be a bit fainter, but then that's going to take go through and, and, and be for an older bottling, yeah, uh, and bottle. therefore it's, it won't necessarily be for, for younger age single malt. So, um, so that's five minutes in to the run. So literally um, 10 minutes after we've stuck the spirits come on uh, onto the stills uh, where we switch it over to collecting spirit, run it for five minutes, and then we collected it. Uh, and this is a result. So, you know, absolutely uh, spot on as far as we're concerned in terms of character. Exactly what we're looking for. Yeah. Um, and then you move on to the, the second one, which is, is 25 minutes in. And now as you go through the run, you know, what happens? Well, as you go, th <coughs> as you go through the run, this is the 25 minutes in, which is 72%. Starting to lose some of that, yeah. The sweet of the florals, it's still there, but still, it's still there, but it's a it's dulled down, it's dulled Not down. A bit. It no, it doesn't have that useful freshness. Uh, uh, it's there, but it's it's more subdued, yeah, yeah, that's the word. yeah, subdued, more subdued, subdued it's word, and it's less sort of forward, uh, in terms of, of the, the character. It's but your, it's dulled down, but you're your back here, you know, you just actually sort of breathes into you know, very slowly. You can still get that sweetness in yeah. the floor. Really. And it's still got that sort of freshness, but it's just when you nose them together. And this is the way to, to nose and taste spirit, uh, because uh, you very rarely get that opportunity of tasting the whole way through a run. Um, uh, so I think. Is that one? You see on the back of the pallet, I just get a little bit of that. Off note on the back of the palate, nothing, nothing very serious. It's just beginning to come in, but it's not really there in, uh, in, in very. It's still floral, it's still fruity, and it's still clean. Um, amazing. Yeah, no, there, I mean the first. There was a lot of positive comments about the, the five minute sample. Um, someone's asked the question: Do you change the cuts when distilling different barley varieties? No, no, keep it. We, we uh, I think uh, our view is um, we like the cut points where they are. I think. The barley varieties is something I've obviously talked about a bit, and, and I've obviously going down the route of, uh, of different barley, barley varieties, creating a different style of spirit. And we've done it, we've done it yeah. uh, and you, we notice the difference. Yeah. And I think I know there's this big uh, debate uh, at the moment about tawar and the influence of tawar, uh, uh, the soil. But we've, we've grown two, in the last two years, we've That's grown barley in the same field. Yeah. Um, Sassy and Concerto last year in, in uh, the same field, and this year, um, Concerto and Diablo. Diablo, yeah. And I think we've tasted the Sassy and Concerto, which sat in the same field, and they're different spirits. I mean, they're still they're, the Concerto is widely known in the industry and, and it's been the, the go to, and I'm not sure I like that word, but it is the, the one that everybody uses at the moment because it, uh, it produces a wonderful spirit, a consistent character and the yields everyone's yeah. looking for. So it has all those things going for it. Now that'll come to the end of its life and, and the seed merchants will have to come up with another one that replaces it. And we've been just um, experimenting with other barley varieties, malting barley varieties that might be able to, to do that job. But having looked at the Diablo, which is growing in the fields, uh, just to let you know that um, we hope to go to, to the harvest uh, next week, maybe the end of next week, 
Uh, you probably can't hear, but it's actually raining at the moment. Uh, it rained all day. No, it didn't rain all day yesterday. It was quite a nice day yesterday, but then we had a lot of rain the day before on uh, Tuesday. Um, so it's a little bit inconsistent, the weather. We quite like it, quite a lot of sunshine to, to get it all ripened and ready to go towards the end of next week. It looks quite dry next week, yeah. so hopefully. And you've looked at the, uh, the two varieties in the, in the, with, with Isla in the field, haven't you? And, and they are quite different, aren't they, the heads? Um, uh, the, the concerto has these big, bold uh, uh, grains, and the, other and the other ones has quite small, but lots more of them. But you know, you look at those two and you go, yeah, I know the one which I'd go for, go for. <laughs> which is concerto. So, but then when you put them through the seal, which we can quite easily do, we're not going to be saying, oh, God, that's going to be useless. It's hopeless. Put it through. Uh, the character of the spirit, and this is, I think, the key thing, is the character of the spirit will be slightly different. Um, but as I've always said, that's fine. And then it goes into wood. Uh, talking about going into wood, some people are asking if all of the samples of what actually goes into the barrels, into the different casks. Yeah, yeah. because what we do, what we do, yeah, you, you go on and explain. Well, yeah, you, you mix, yeah, you mix. The whole run goes into the, the ISR and then gets pumped over to the, the warehouse receiver and then that's when it all marries together yeah. to have a mix of all these four. Yeah, so all these four are, are our spirit run, really, Which uh, you, and they get mixed together. You know, and it carries on. A few, we had a sample of the finished product. You could, you could get the floral. Yeah. The, and you get the creaminess, the and you don't get any of the off notes. Yeah, really. you know, it's, oh, uh, yeah. But it's worth, if you've got samples in front of you, to mix them all together. Just put them all in one glass and, and then taste the nose it um, uh, separately. Because this is just showcasing how the spirit, um, where we take our cut points, and every distillery is different. So some will take longer uh, at, the, at the faints end. They'll go further into it because they want an oilier, uh, heavier style of spirit. But we were always keen to have a lighter and one. And some don't reduce it down to 63.5 yeah. either. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. yeah. so uh, everyone has a different idea about what they want to end up in, in the glass as single malt. Uh, another couple of questions. Are these samples from our own malted barley or Portel and Maltings? And what's the PPM level? Portel and Maltings. So this will be the concerto. Uh, PPM, 50 PPM, approximately. Yeah, so when we talk about PPM, it's at the, at, at the uh, before we put it through the production, it's yeah. 50 PPM. Uh, once it's been uh, in cask and mature for 10 years, it probably loses half of that uh, phenol content. All right, but this is definitely... And that's the other thing is, um, you know, how different our spirits are between our well, uh, own barley. Own barley, yeah, T totally different. Uh, There's even more floral than this. Yeah, oh yeah, totally more floral. I think you get some, some more like citrusy sort of. Mm. Um, no, I think that's right. So they are quite different, and I think that's that's important for us as a as a distillery to to have such a distinct difference between our two main stays uh, of of whiskey. Especially when it's in the cask as well. You crack open the cask and it's Go side by side, you can immediately tell the difference yeah. between the Pohol and Malt. Yeah, I mean, you, it, it takes very little to, to yeah. you just have to nose it and, and, and pick up the difference. Yeah. The Port Ellen Malt has a much uh, uh, stronger character uh, and more depth, uh, and 100% uh, Isla tends to have this light, floral, fruity uh, character, even as it ages. And, and those who've tried our, our releases of 100% uh, Isla, we're now about to release the 10th in, in a few weeks, uh, and that's aged for over nine years. Um, and then you taste the 2010 vintage, which we released uh, uh, last autumn, and that was nine years of age. They are quite different. Um, the the Port Ellen Malt just gives a, there's a stronger character and there's more smoke and, and peat on the back of the palate. So we know you keep the malt from Port Ellen and our own malt separate, but yeah. do you ever um, mix barley varieties together um, with each other and distill together? No, we keep everything separate. That way you can sort of see the difference between the two that's what we're trying to achieve just different mm. yeah that's why we're doing these experiments with different bits of fuel so when they do come through the stills you can actually see the difference. yeah i think it, we don't mix them uh, and and octavia is something that we're about to bring down from uh to to malt it uh, and that was from uh 2008 we have got a few already so yeah. we try and keep them separate because we're quite keen on highlighting as it goes through maturation, the difference that might be there after it's spent a number of years yeah, in cars. Yeah. Um, 
So that's the first two, um, you know, one at five minutes and, and one at 25. Uh, and I would say those are the, those are the more floral sort of uh, sweet and, and creamy, creamy uh, spirits. And then we're getting into sort of 45 minutes into the, into the run. So now it's beginning to maybe um, pick up a bit of oiliness. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's changing character now. Um, I wouldn't say that this is sort of picking up that fainty note so much on the nose anyway. Um, and it's a, this would be at, uh, what is it? 69. So this is, this is dropping down a little bit, still bloody strong, but, yeah. <laughs> um, uh, you, you, it, it has, it's, it's, it's less fresh and it's beginning to, to, uh, become sort of, um, uh, sort of heavier in heavier, character heavier oily, yeah? Yeah. and oilier. Yeah. Um, uh, but it's still good enough as far as we're concerned and it's still very good to be mixed in with our fresh, and so you're talking about something, you know, five minutes in down to 35 minutes, and then you've got the 45 minutes and the 90 minutes, which just tail off of it. I mean, on the palate, we've still got the sweetness. We've still the mm. sweetness and the fruitness is still there. Yeah, I mean, you, on the back of the palate, you just pick up a, a little bit of that sort of off note. Not very much, yeah. but it's just there. It's just becoming, just coming through a little bit more. On that third sample, whereas the first two, you didn't have any of that at all. I think I was <laughs> <laughs> uh, mm. um, um, Does the rate of the flow through the still change during the run at any point? Um, during the actual middle cut spirit, I mean, try and keep that consistent all the way through. But times when it's um, warmer, we use like uh, the cooling tower, we do need to actually. Maybe a lot slower for this because to keep that when get 20 degrees. Yeah, but once, but once you're on, once you're off the spirit and you're onto your faints, mm -hmm. you can every what, 10 50 minutes you just turn it up to keep that rolling boil going. I think, um, we use condensers, uh, um, cooling tower condensers, and and I think the the old adage the old boys were telling you, you know, the best months to to uh distill a sort of October through till March, yeah. April, and then as it warms up, you know. It's just June, July, and August. Uh, it can be uh, pretty tricky if it's cool. You know, cool down the ambient temperature. So if it's 20, yeah. 21 degrees outside. It's, yeah. It's just, it's yeah. So it becomes tougher. We have to slow things down a bit, don't yeah. we? We have to just slow it down. And are the stills operated by hand or by computer? Someone's asking. Everything's um, by hand, but we've got sensors and just for a visual and alarms. But everything is. Yeah, we have a computer that gives us. Uh, just Proper readouts read for out. temperatures and, and flow and stuff. Yeah. And, yeah. Which is, but everything is is manual. Uh, we don't we don't operate it uh, behind a, a, a laptop. Um, which is key, I think, in 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 the old traditional way of distilling, and it's all feel and, and by hand, and the operator needs to be on the ball when it keep, comes yeah, to. Keeps, um, um, yeah, I've got more, more questions coming in. Questions. Um, what temperature are you taking the spirit off the still, and is it consistent all year round? Well, we no. sort of answered that question before yeah. we had this. Yeah, well, you, you want, no, you want to So it's a fair uh, winter time, you'd be going down for 18 degrees for the, the spirit run. It probably near the end, it'll get to about 20, but uh, near the summertime. If it's warm. If, if, yeah, okay. If it doesn't it's warm. get warm on either. <laughs> <laughs> it's warm. <laughs> it get yeah, yeah, we never call it about hot on either because it never gets hot. Yeah, it's been uh, the last few runs, you know, last few weeks. Of between 20 and 24, so we'll be starting at about 20, and then when we go off spirit, it'll be about 24 degrees. And we wouldn't want it to be any higher than yeah. that, really. I mean, but I mean, uh, we were struggling the other week because yeah. it was that 25 degrees, it was 27 really degrees. It was 27 yeah. degrees, and we couldn't, yeah, it was coming off spirit at 27. Times. Yeah, so it, you suddenly realize then if we had a, a heat wave on Isla, it wouldn't, we wouldn't be very happy people. I know a lot of people would be very happy, but <laughs> we wouldn't be very happy because it would be very difficult to keep the quality of the well, spirit, the character of the spirit, we the need, way we want. We need to install a chiller or something like yeah, that. Yeah, chiller, yes. Yeah, we need to yeah, spend more money. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Now we do that every day of the week. Uh, <laughs> and do you think the style of the spirit would be different from different condensers, i.e. worm tubs? Well, we've never tried them. Um, uh, I think um, it's all to do with uh, the ambient temperature of the water, isn't it? Um, um, there is there is the argument that we've warmed up that you got more copper contact. Yeah. But um well we don't know that. And if we had if we did have, we could Yeah. I know traditionally I think uh people would put in worm tubs, so they think they get a, a better consistency and a, a lower temperature 
and they can control the temperature more. But to be honest, uh, you know, we've tasted our spirit in the summer as against in the winter, and there's not a lot of difference, to be honest. Uh, so it's, it's working pretty well for us. Um, so the, the fourth one, I think, when you pick the fourth one up, you, you, this is at 90 minutes into the run. So this is right at the end of the run, isn't it? Yeah, 90 right. minutes is probably right at the end of, of the spirit run before we cut back onto faints. Um, and um, our spirit run doesn't really run more than an hour and a half, is it? No, no. no. it was the other week when it was quite hot. It was yeah, going into two hours. It was, hours. Going, it was going into two hours. Because you're slowing it down. It's running so slowly. But, um, so what we do is if, if it is warm, we just slow everything down. Yeah, we just turn the valves down to just slow the whole process down, so we're not pull, pulling through uh, unwanted um, uh, spirit. Yeah, because then yeah. it both gets more fainter because yeah. it's, you're pushing the pushing it over the top. Uh, pushing what? <laughs> pushing what? What are you pushing? A wheelbarrow? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's lost words. Yeah, <laughs> the vapors. Pushing the vapors. Yeah, yeah. not the wheelbarrow. Not a wheel. <laughs> Wheelbarrow the line now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the vapors up over the line. Yeah, so yeah. it's not getting as much copper. Yeah, no, so that's right. So, yeah. so you want more reflux yeah. then? So you pull it back down, slow it down, and then push it back up again. Yeah. So, uh, there's yeah. a question about the frothing as well. Do you use anything to reduce frothing during distillation? Not through distillation. No, no, uh, no not through distillation. Not really. No. During, sorry, not. No, no, but. Um, we do use a little bit of anti foam in the in the, the wash bags. Wash yeah. bags, yeah, to stop them um, overflowing. Because if they they can get very active and they can overflow. Especially if your home and more can be quite active. Yeah. So easy. I wonder why that is. We don't really know. Yeah. No. It just seems more active than the hotel and that. No. Poor animals a bit sleepy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but just just to finish off on that on the the spirit run, and I think you know uh, this one. You know, we know we're at the back end of the run here because, you know, you've got more heavier containers, heavier oils and, and, and maybe a little bit more faintiness. Um, when I call about faintiness, just that I sort of go, I've got my grandchild saying at the moment, sort of baby sick. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Baby, um, sick. baby sick. You know, you just get that slight sort of off note um, coming through. Mm. And yeah. certainly on the back of the palate, a little bit more of that. But it's still, it's still fresh, it's yeah, still fruity. It? Uh, you just get a little bit more of those uh, fainty characteristics coming through. But it's not a hugely acceptable, difficult yeah, from the 45 minutes. Very acceptable. And we're more than happy with that. And then when you mix all these four together in, in the receiver, we have a spirit receiver in the, in the still houses because we've got operating two still, uh, still houses now. And then we pump that through uh, in the port and malt. We pump it all into one. Uh, yeah, once it's all mixed in uh, one receiver, it's average there about 70%. Yeah, so 70%. Then 70%. Alcohol. And then, then you reduce, reduce that to 65.5. Yeah, 65. 65. 65. 65. 65. Sorry. The 63. 65.5 is our cut. Yeah. <laughs> 63.5. I'm glad you were. Yeah, I'm glad you I think, I think Are you sure? Yeah, well, hold on. <laughs> so you might have another one. Are you sure? <laughs> uh, yeah, no, we, it's 60, um, 63.5. We fill it, um, reduce all our cars down to 63.5. A lot of people ask us why we do that. Well, Jim's one was adamant that it helps kickstart the maturation and a little bit of reduction just marries it all together and sends us on its journey. And he was adamant that I shouldn't be filling at uh, full strength. And we've actually never done that. But I think we should be maybe doing that occasionally um, uh, just to see how it all, how it goes and how it matures and, and, and how the end whiskey uh, ends up. But uh, certainly the industry is always done it at 63.5 because there's a lot of swaps within the different companies in the industry and it was easier to do the calculations if everyone reduced it to the same strength um so i think you know this is something that that a lot of people don't get to 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 uh to taste and to understand a bit more about how uh the single malt starts its journey uh, and it's all a bit so it's, it's reasonably straightforward in that you know we are trying to produce a consistent character of spirit once we've earmarked what that is uh, and uh, stick to that rigidly. So the guys come in and they do the same thing. And if the guys come in and if they think there's an issue with the quality, they come and tell you or me. Yeah. And you going, go and kick their ass. Oh, no, we're going to check it. Well, <laughs> no, it's good for them to yeah, check. No. We know they're checking no, it. No, no, they've done that. I think uh, in the last uh, few months, there's been a few issues and we've resolved them and, and moved on. And I think 
It's very key, isn't we, it, for your guys to understand? We contained, we contained it in the SRWV, put yeah. it into some other casks yeah. and marked them for... It was fermentation or something, wasn't it? What was it? it yeah, was, there was something wrong with it, something going to the fermentation yeah. part. Yeah. So, so we, as it came in through, yeah. we separated it and put it in different casks. And it's, it's very key that the guys are on the ball and, and understanding and realising if there's something's not as it should be, it's, it has to be yeah. um, highlighted and then we move on. Because this is... This is um, this is the future of Kilhoman. This is how it starts its life, and and then I, you know, I can talk about barley varieties and talk about yeast varieties and how that influences the character spirit. But I think at the end of the day, the, these chaps will will play the biggest part uh, in the end product because we're drinking single malt whiskey at five, 10, 15, 20 years of age, and not new spirit straight off the still. Uh, but it is fascinating, I believe, this end of it that doesn't get talked about a huge amount. Certainly, yeast variety doesn't. Uh, it's not sexy. Yeast isn't sexy. Uh, so Some why talk about this? Yeah. Do you? No. no not no. at home. No, I don't. No. Know. <laughs> <laughs> no. But um, I think Robin, uh, Robin, you, you know, you started in 2010. Now, Robin hadn't been working in the distillery before. Uh, he came as a, as a part-time still yeah. to start with yeah. uh, and then rapidly moved up the ladder. He must have, um, he must have something nice to me or something. I don't, I don't know what he did. Got um, Thank you. And, and then uh, in 2015, uh, took over as manager. You know, sadly, um, John McClellan, uh, who uh, joined me in 2009, uh, you know, with bags of experience from Bunnahaven, 22 years, and, uh, and then sadly uh, contracted uh, prostate cancer. And, and uh, he's no longer with us. And, and Robin knew John very well. And, and uh, it was John who, who recommended uh, Robin to come to the distillery. And, and he couldn't have chosen a better guy because Robin has taken on that mantle and is doing a great job in making sure that, that we're producing the spirit that, that we want and, and uh, that it goes into the wood um, that, that we've chosen. And Jim Swan, again, was, was instrumental in making sure I had the contacts uh, in, uh, in the cast maturation and, and getting the contacts in uh, Buffalo Trace Cecilia, which we use for all our bourbon casks, and Miguel Martin with all our sherry casks. Uh, and then we've started to fill all sorts of experimental casks, which people probably uh, who have joined in tonight will have, have tried some of our experimental cast releases and it's great fun because uh, uh, you'll know that everything we've filled into these different casts they've seemed to work haven't yeah they? they're good actually yeah, yeah. Some of them are they, really... they've all worked well um so any more questions coming in there's a couple um do the Kilhoman stills have purifiers and the line arms no they don't they don't have purifiers um and you were talking about overcoming some problems and things. Do you sometimes have to redistill or ever throw away some runs? Not really. We thought about that. What yeah, we were talking one about, of we them. We've, we've, we've cast them, haven't we? We, we thought about redistilling it, but after we reduced it and had it in the warehouse receiver, we sampled it and sampled it against um, some other new yeah, exposure. And uh, you could tell there was a wee bit of yeah, off it wasn't out there, yeah. so we just put them in different casks. It's similar to our Amburak release, you know, which yeah. um, didn't go according to plan. And it wasn't ever thought that we might mix our Mackie Bay with a port cask uh, matured release that we were about to do. But mistakes happen occasionally, and, and we've released something uh, that's worked incredibly well. Just about patience. You put it into a cask, forget about it for six, seven years, go back to it. And actually, it's turned out really well. Uh, and uh, we might repeat it again. Uh, well, not on purpose, you know, not, uh, <laughs> not the same way as we did the last one, but um, uh, because I worked out uh, that it cost us 50,000. Well, I thought it was going to cost us 50,000 uh, pounds. But as it turned out, it, 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 it worked. And I think the old adage is in this business is patience yeah. uh, and not trying to rush something that's not ready, but just having the patience to leave it uh, for a year or two or three or four. And, and uh, hopefully it'll come around at some point. Um, have you ever changed your fermentation length? And if so, how did that affect the new make? We have a bit, haven't we? Yeah, I don't think it made much difference. Well, this week we just uh, a wee bit, but <laughs> our break hard. Yeah, I mean, we've, but, um, but on the whole, yeah, we've gone for longer fermentation. When I first started, I think we had some longer. Well, yeah. I think we were up 120, not average, average. We, we averaged about 100, 100 wasn't yeah. it? Yeah, and now we've just reduced that. And then when we saw up production to six washbacks, it went down to about 70 because we had some really mm. short fermentations and then we sort of and then we it. moved it up again because we started going down a longer 
seven days then, so we could split yeah. out. Um, I think what fermentation. Jim was always keen for a long fermentation. So, you know, we've always understood that that was, it was key to getting this character. Sometimes it moved down a little bit, there's 70, yeah. 75. Uh, but when you look, consider the average in the industry is around 55 to 65. You know, we're still on the higher end, even at 70, 75. But we've moved it back up to about 80. And we have tasted spirit, haven't we? The longer fermentation yeah, and, and, the, and the slightly shorter. And there's not a huge not difference. Not to know. Late no. late, anyway. I think it's all to do with um, fermenting it all out, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, and I think we, we do do that pretty consistently. After 65, 70 hours, it's, it's getting to that point. Because the moment we've got... Our shortest is very anyway, it's probably 70, 65, 70. The, the longest, is, the longest about, is about 100. 100, yeah. Or so 80, 80 around 80. 80. Uh, and, it's, and it's working well. I think the key for Robin and, and myself is, is checking these samples on a fairly regular basis from different uh, washbacks, um, some shorter fermentation washbacks and some longer ones to see that it's all coming together in the way we want. Uh, because I think. Uh, as I've said earlier, it's all about the consistent character of the spirit that we're looking for all, all the time. Yeah, we've got a comment saying that it's been an interesting follow-up from the yeast and barley variety tasting that we did back in May, wasn't it? We did that in the festival. Yeah. 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 Um, how often do you experiment with different types of yeast? Um, we, we've done Kerry, uh, we've done two styles of Kerry yeast, um, uh, yeah. pressed yeast, isn't it? Both were pressed. Yeah. Uh, We've done the dried yeast, uh, two types of dried yeast, um, and we've done Mary and we've done anything else. The two, the M and the MG. Ah, that's right. Uh, so we have, but I think, to me, you always find the one that works really well, which at the moment, the Mary pressed yeast does a great job. Yeah. You know, I'm tempted maybe to switch to the dried yeast for, for, for everything going forward at some point, but, but at the moment, uh, the, the pressed yeast, Mary pressed yeast is still working very well for us. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think it's just about us highlighting uh, the characteristics that yeast varieties bring to the spirit. I'm going to be interested. These experiments have been done fairly recently, haven't they? They've been only the last two yeah, years. Yeah, when we first came back from after lockdown, now, yeah. we were in dry yeast. Dry yeast for two months, it, or months or a month or yeah, two. Or yeah, a month or two. Yeah. It's just yeah. to get, well, to get, the, get, it, get it through, get, yeah. get a decent amount. Uh, I think it's then the key then is to see how that matures in cast. Is there going to be a marked difference or not? And if I had a punt at whether it's going to be marked, I'd say no. I don't think it necessarily will be that marked. There might be uh, uh, the odd difference, but you'd have to put the two samples alongside each other after five or ten years yeah. and, and really uh, nose and taste them together to see if uh, there is a marked difference. If we find a yeast we don't like, and, and look, a lot of distilleries use Kerry, don't they? And, yeah. and we didn't. It didn't suit us, so we we decided to drop it and, and go with back to Mary. Um, this is maybe a good suggestion. Are you going to do another spirit run tasting, but with our own barley? Yeah, I mean we could. Yes, I mean uh, I think that's something that we we can do and and uh, would do, and and, it, and I think it would highlight the the, the marked difference between the two uh, spirit runs. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. we know that. Uh, I mean, I think yes, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, this is always quite a, a common question. Any plans for more STR matured? Yeah, no, we, um, we, we think we might try and uh, put, push that into our core range at some point in the future because we, we believe that the STR was probably one of our better uh, experimental releases that we did. It was uh, seven years of age. Um, and actually, at the time, we'd forgotten we had the cast in the warehouse. <laughs> I think, wasn't it? I think we had. Um, and when we found them, they were seven years of age. Most of the experimental research we've done have been three, four, five years of age. Um, so we've now uh, made a decision. We're filling a lot more STR casts every year so that we'll get a point where we can release a lot more and maybe make it a part of the, the core range going forward. But a few years off that. But that worked incredibly well. Uh, the balance um, between the sort of spirit character, the whiskey character, Kilhoman character, and the sort of summer fruits and uh, character coming through uh, blew people away. I think they really enjoyed it. Um, I think the questions have slowed down now. Lots of people seem to be having fun combining the samples yeah, at home now. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, that, that is worth doing because you've got the, the cut points of, of the spirit run and now just combine it all together, shake it up, uh, you'll sleep well tonight. Add a little bit of water, just reduce it a bit. Yeah, it might be worth reducing it slightly. Um, uh, it's better than a, a sleeping pill anyway. <laughs> <laughs>
Um, so, I mean, uh, I think, um, uh, I don't think this has really been done very often, the spirit run tastings. I've done them before and, uh, and I think it, it really highlights the character of the distillery. Well, the distillery character comes through on the spirit and I know we don't drink it, but it's how it starts the journey. And I think it's very informative and, and educational for people to get a chance to, to taste through our, our, our spirit run. Uh, and to see how, you know, Kilhoman starts its journey, because this is the key part of, uh, of the whole process. You know, Robin and his team, uh, you know, really have a responsibility to make sure that the, the character remains the same. And that uh, I've always had the mantra that, that it's about Robin making sure the guys do the same things day in, day out. But this uh, spirit is consistent as these four samples are in front of you and that let the wood go to work. And that's always been... Uh, my mantra is that's what's key to the, to Kilhoman moving forward. Um, there was a few people had asked earlier today about the recording being available for this, so it will be available and anyone that watches later can still add questions in the comment and we'll go through them yeah. later. Good, well look, uh, I hope you've enjoyed those who've joined in. Uh, thanks very much for joining us this evening. It, uh, it's it's fun for, for Robin and I to to uh, do a tasting like this uh, with an audience. I know you're not with us and it's always quite sort of difficult talking to a camera, though I can see Catherine behind the camera. Um, <laughs> and I'm looking out on a great view of Beaumont across the, the Loch and Dahl. Um, but thanks very much for joining us. Uh, we'll be doing this again and, uh, and the next uh, tasting we're doing on the 17th of September is a food pairing, another of our food pairing. We've done uh, one with uh, Chocolate? No, we haven't done that. No. It, it? <laughs> uh, one with uh, charcuterie. Charcuterie, great blend charcuterie. And then we done one with yeah. uh, Gear Halibut. Oh, halibut. And the next uh, one is with uh, Isle of Mull uh, cheese. Uh, all these companies are, are family run, family owned companies, similar to Kilhoman. And, and so we, we've started to move into the, the food pairings. It's been a lot of fun. And the next one is on September the 17th. And the samples are now up. Uh, on the, the website to, to purchase. It's the Core Range, Maccabay, San Egg, uh, Loch Lomond, 100% Isla. And the cheeses will be um, going up soon and, and uh, we'll be able to, to share that link with you as well. So thanks very much for joining us and we'll see you all again soon.